الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله a question was asked of Habib Tafillah about how to repent or seek forgiveness with regards to racism. And I thought it was kind of a a bit strange and a bit uncomfortable as a topic because the individual may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and them and bless us and bless them mentioned about some feelings that they had or displeasure that they had towards I don't know if it was me personally or me as a African American but it was a racial kind of thing and how they and they realized their errors so how can they repent? I would say first and foremost, like all Toba, that you should be determined not to return to the sin. Although it wasn't a particular transgression against a specific individual perhaps, and maybe it didn't result in speech or something, but in general, just to feel sorrow as you mentioned that you do and to avoid being a racist hating people or thinking people are less than you because of their skin color is darker or lighter or whatever as you mentioned and being resolved not to return to that any kind of racist behavior but really, racism, a lot of it comes to do, as you pointed out yourself, in the, as the questioner pointed out, that it's a lack of education, being unaware of those issues, or being unaware that you have su a supremist ideology. And many people who are the pawns of racism learned it from their families and their communities. So then that is what their mizan, their, their scale is for judging others that they're different, they should be feared or they should be hated or they're less than. So it's, it takes unlearning. And I believe aside from the toba, that it's a long process and perhaps a process you never can fully complete Allah knows best. Allah knows best. Because if you really believe at one point that you were better than others because of their skin tone, it's difficult for me to understand and relate that you can totally erase that. That there seems to me there would always be, or at least for a long period of time, there's going to be, it's a process that you cling to. And another point is because racism has so many different levels and facets that we also have structural racism. The racism, uh, institutional racism, meaning the society is still gonna propagate that. The society still propagates that. Uh, and so, for example, in particular communities, it's cool to be a pimp. And I would say this is amongst the lower in status that it's been, been glorified for them to be an oppressor, an abuser, an user, and one who sells women. That's actually looked at as something good or to be a thug. And another group, and unfortunately it's widespread in, in American society especially, I don't know about other Western societies, 
but especially in America, because of massive institutional racism, a black woman has been viewed as only a sexual object. So then you find many women, especially on the lower social classes, if you will, economically disadvantaged and what have you, that they actually glorify that themselves. That's what they see as status. So it, it, it's, there was a, a famous piece of poetry from a group called The Last Poets. And I think the name of this piece of poetry was called It's Already Been Done Yet. It's Already Been Done Yet. And what they meant by this, and in fact, The Last Poets, all of them, I think, became Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Allah yarhamuhum, for those who passed. That they meant that it's <laughs> the mind has already been conquered. And a lot of their poetry was about that. They were talking about uh, the colonial effects on African Americans in general and Latinos in, a, in America. That how they were, their minds are already gone. Their body is there, but their minds are already gone. Malcolm X expounded upon it as well. And he was prior to them. And they got their ideas from Malcolm. Rahmatullahi rahmatin wasiyah in which he mentioned about how the some of the slaves, the house slaves, guarded their masters more than the master looked out for his own well-being. They would defend him even more so. And they had more love for him than he might even have had for himself, and especially for his interest. So their mind was totally gone. Some refused to escape. They didn't even want to leave slave because that was comfort for them. They had a position and fear and so much self-hatred. It was inculcated in them. So what I mean to say by that is, it show, is, is this is something which is inculcated. We're all a product that if you're in American society, one way or another, racism has affected you and institutional racism and this neo-colonial mindset, we're a product of that. No matter how, how much of that we take on board, meaning someone could be very, very free from racism, meaning they don't hate, they don't think themselves superior to others, but there's still effects of it. There's still, they understand because they're a product of this society. This society was built on that. Built on the enslavement of people and the caste system. Similar to the Hindus, in a sense. And hopefully we get to study that more in depth as there's a new piece of research that's recently come out, which I'm interested in, and I'm gonna purchase the book. But anyhow, you know, we're all affected. So it's a matter of management, and it's a matter of consciously trying to destroy that within you. It's like other sins in the sense of, unfortunately, the society, it's still going to be there. You know, look how polarized and how things are under Trump and how so many people have come to light. The mainstream political parties, like the Republicans, you know, racist, you know, they allowed racism just to flourish out of fear of Trump and a sharing of some of his superiority, his uh, white superiority and defense of white su supremacist ideas. So with that being the case, it's so entrenched in the society, but as an individual, as a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to uh, deal with that issue. You have to deal with that on a personal level, and that starts with education. Educating yourself about this issue, because it is important. Because if it affects how you see your brothers and sisters, how you interact with your brothers and sisters, your stereotypes of your brothers and sisters, no doubt it affects you. No doubt it affects your deed. No doubt it affects how we relate as Muslims. We're Muslim. We're brothers. We're supposed to ta'awun ala bidu wa taqwa. We're supposed to uh, cooperate in righteousness and God-fearfulness. Not on enmity and sin. So with that being the case, Ahabatifillah, it's something, it's a constant 
battle that has to be fought. Like other sins. For example, a person who deals with uh, some other sin of drugs or pornography or uh, fornication or something. It's something they have to work through. But all of those sins, they differ. They differ with how they, it, how they affect a person. The addiction of a person being addicted to fornication is not like the addiction of pornography. More and more studies are showing pornography actually is a, a an addiction that it really it affects your mind. It actually does something to your brain cells. This is what those people in that field are showing. Likewise, drug abuse, substance abuse is very similar. So these have physio, you know, physical and mental effects upon you. Where and, and, and racism has an institutional element. It has all of those elements of psychology, but it's because you're constantly being bombarded by that racial stimulus what makes it, it makes it even more challenging. But there are people who are white supremacists and people who are black supremacists who left their ideologies and came back into human understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us and we're all children of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. So there are people who have that kind of hatred and that animosity and the superiority complex and they actually abandon that. Allah knows best their, their state of their heart, but they now openly renounce that and cooperate with people of other races and go forward. So this is a trial and a tribulation. What I would say is make Toba to Allah, uh, get to know your brothers and sisters, uh, study about the concept of racism because it's so complex, it's so deep, it's so entrenched. We're, we're only talking about one particular community. I'm talking about in the concept of what was articulated to me about maybe anti-black racism. But there's so many facets. Look at within communities, as our brother, one of the brothers was mentioning about the inner uh, between uh, Pakistani and uh, uh, and Indians. And then Bengalis are even on another scale according to them. You know, everyone thinks they're superior to others. And then the caste system. And then color schemes. Within those, each one of those cultures, if you're a darker Bengali, you're a darker Indian, you're a darker uh, uh, Pakistani, then, you know, they face a type of racism. So, it's a hor horrendous disease that we have to work on, and we have to know, start by beginning to know about it. To know that it's a disease, but it's also a lot of times based on an ideology. And that, uh, based on the ideology of superiority. So once you can see that no race is superior to another, then obviously you can begin to deal with those issues. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct is from the lies of the Anything I said that was incorrect is from myself and the shaitan. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.